Great, thanks Warren. Uh, good morning and good evening from wherever you are joining us. Uh, welcome to the third Global Minor Use Priority Setting Workshop. My name's Alan Norden from Australia and I'm a director on the board of the Minor Use Foundation and I'm your moderator for today. Today is the second day of this workshop with the same process having been conducted just over 24 hours prior to now. Before we start, I'll just reiterate some things that um, Warren from Fountainworks has described in terms of some of the house rules for today. But just to recap, um, please mute your microphone, um, turn off your video camera if you can, just to assist with the amount of bandwidth that's being used. And when we take questions and seek your input today, you're requested to type the letter Q into the chat box in Zoom. Today's workshop is also being recorded, so please be mindful of this. If you experience any technical difficulties during the workshop, there's a tech support registered in the Zoom meeting attendees list, or you can email Fountainworks at the email address of info, I-N-F-O, at fountainworks.com. Some parts of today's workshop are pre-recorded to ensure we can stay on time and within our given time frame. We've set aside four hours to run today's workshop, starting with approximately 30 minutes for introductions from Dirk Drost, a summary of priorities from the previous two workshops and progress to date, and an explanation of the process that's been followed for this third workshop. Then we'll spend approximately three hours going through the identified priorities and merit analysis conducted for each of the greenhouse, temperate and tropical crops. And we'll have a short break after the first two merit analysis groups of around five to 10 minutes. We'll then finish the workshop with a final discussion and refinement of priorities and conclude with a summary of the day and an explanation of next steps. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Dirk Drost, Chair of the Mighty East Foundation, to make a few opening comments. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Drost. Hello. This is the introduction to the third Global Minor Use Priority Setting Workshop. My outline for today is to uh, do a welcome, to share with you the objective of the workshop, to provide so a few thanks and recognition of people that were involved in uh, the organization of the workshop and to encourage you to welcome each other and enjoy each other's company while you enjoy the workshop. The Minor Youth Foundation Incorporated is continuing the work started by the Global Minor Youth Summits 1 and Summit 2. We have taken over the globalminoruseprioritydotorg, the uh, website gmub.org, and integrated that into the foundation's website www.minoruseufoundation.org. The foundation was established by the USDA Foreign Ag Service and IR4 in 2018. It is an independent nonprofit foundation, which is led by a board of directors, and I am the, the board chairman. We're comprised of a worldwide group of stakeholders, volunteers, industry participants, regulatory agency participants, growers and grower groups, other, other NGOs, and many individual participants. So we are excited to be able to hold the conference virtually this year, although all of us would have preferred to be together in Minneapolis, um, but that was un impossible due to the coronavirus pandemic. The objectives of the workshop are outlined on this slide. During the workshop, we're going to review the ideas for which merit analyses have been completed. We are going to hear from the merit analysis team leads or a team representative. We are going to be led in a discussion by the discussion leaders. And during that discussion, you may choose to review and adjust 
some of the project rankings based on our discussions of the merit analysis components. As participants, we welcome you to help us develop a consensus on the global minor use priorities, which we are establishing for 2021 and 2022. And I encourage you to ensure that all of us have an opportunity to contribute to these outcomes by participating uh, fully in the workshop that we are holding. After the workshops, the organizing committee will integrate the output of these two workshops, these two identical workshops, one being held uh, on each of two days. We will consult with our partners and we will communicate the final outcomes. The foundation board of directors then will review the recommendations and fund the work as the capacity and resources are and become available. I would like to thank and recognize the more than 180 participants who have signed up to join us in these virtual workshops. Thank you very much for the time and the commitment that you have made. I would also like to thank the organizing committee all of you who submitted ideas, voted on nominations, participated either as merit analysis team members or team leaders, and have and to all the volunteers and workshop leaders that we're going to interact with today. I'd also like to thank our partners at the USDA Foreign Ag Service and IR4 and our virtual meeting facilitators and technology providers Fountainworks. I'd like to acknowledge the funding that we've received from industry, from governments, and from individual donors. And thank you all for that. And finally, I'd like to thank Fountainworks for their conference facilitation and functioning as our technology provider for today. I'd encourage you to enjoy the workshop Participate appropriately and responsibly. Listen to the instructions and follow them. For example, simple things that all of us can do are to mute our phones, disable video, um, to save bandwidth. Use a chat box to, to, to uh, ask a question. Just put your question in the chat box. Say, I have a question, and you will be recognized and, get, and be given the opportunity to um, get an answer. Here's my contact information in case you'd like to reach me during the conference or afterwards. My name is Dirk Drost, and that's dirk.drost at minoruseFoundation.org. And my telephone number is also listed. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for participating in this virtual workshop. And thank you in advance for making it a success. Thank you, Dirk. And I'd like to thank Dirk for his leadership in getting this workshop together uh, today and the one that we ran um, yesterday. We now have a moment, if anyone has any questions of Dirk, can you please raise them now by entering the letter Q in the Zoom chat box? And we'll just wait for a moment to see if any questions come in. Okay, I'm not seeing anything. So I'd now like to invite Dr. Dan Kunkel, Senior Associate Director from the USIR4 project to give us an update on happening since the first two workshops held in 2015 and 2017. Over to you, Dan. Hello, everyone. Just wanted to give you an update and progress on the priorities that came out of the first two global minor use priority setting workshops. As you remember, the first one was in 2015 in Chicago, and then we had our second one in 2017 in Montreal, Quebec. But first, let me uh, update you on the STDF projects. We had a number of projects for Spinetoram, 
uh, that were submitted to JMPR in 2017. Uh, and codex have been established on lychee, mango, and avocado. So great deal of success there. We also did a study on uh, zoxystrobin and diphenconazole on dragon fruit, and both of those codex MRLs have been established as well. We are waiting for a, a zoxystrobin and diphenconazole MRLs for guava to be established. There was some discrepancies between the label and the MOR study did, did not match. So the label's being updated and hopefully we'll get a MRLs established on that. For uh, also some other studies were pyroproxifen. Uh, they, they were submitted in 2018 to JMPR and codex MRLs have been established for papaya and pineapple. However, mango was delayed uh, because of some clarifications were needed in the study and also banana was delayed as well because some clarifications needed in the study as well. Hopefully they can be resolved. The, the mango was expected to go forward this year, but due to the COVID pandemic, it's been delayed. And some of the label, label language uh, MOR study for the banana needs to be worked out yet. The sulfoxiflor mango study that was done in Africa was submitted to JMPR last year and should have been reviewed at the September JMPR meeting, but again, that was delayed also because of the pandemic. So now talking about the uh, priorities that came out of the first two global minor use workshops, we start with the greenhouse or protected crop priorities. And in 2015, the priorities were, the A priority was around aphids uh, and lettuce grown in the greenhouse. And some of the possible solutions included spinanoram and sulfoxiflor. There were studies being done in the EU and North America, and the current uh, submissions are pending the regulatory agencies. Acetamiprid and pyroproxifen, these are registered, I believe, individually in the US. Uh, Australia was looking at this as, as a possibility, but now they're looking at a phytopyropin as a, a priority and they're moving forward with that project. The B priority projects, thrips and whiteflies, there's been some progress in that area as well with a spinetaram sulfoxiflor a project is pending submission for thrips control on fruiting vegetables, tomatoes and peppers primarily. And then also a coded compound, NA11630. There's an ongoing study in North America. And for white flies, a fluparata diferone uh, has been registered in North America. And a phytopyropin, uh, there's also a North America project. And that has been submitted to the regulatory agencies, uh, EPA and PMRA in Canada. And there's uh, also, I mentioned earlier, the NA11630 project that's ongoing in North America also shows some activity on white flight. Uh, for the 2017 priorities that came from, from Quebec, Montreal, uh, powdery mildew on cucumbers was the number one priority. And there's some ongoing studies for flutionil on cucumbers, as well as XDE, an experimental compound, XDE659 is also ongoing. Uh, I did uh, notice that we did have some biopesticide efficacy uh, projects with IR4 uh, for powdery mildew control. So I've uh, added a link to those uh, reports. Uh, here, and you can uh, visit that site uh, at your leisure. Thrips on ornamentals was also a priority, a B priority priority uh, from this, the uh, 2017 workshop. IR4 has done some work in this area as well. Unfortunately, a lot of the products that we tested did not show very good activity uh, against thrips. Uh, but I do provide that report for you if you want to review it. For our temperate crop priorities from the 2015 workshop, we could see downy mildew on leafy vegetables was our highest priority. Uh, registered products uh, include um, 
amectodrectin plus dimethamorph and oxythiopiprolin in North America and Australia, mandopropamid in North America, and then some activity in the EU. Uh, the B priority project was aphids on legume crops, and flonicamid has been registered in North America, and the EU is looking into that project. And in Australia, a phytopyropin has been registered. 2017, downy mildew was a, a priority project on basil, and there's a uh, product, uh, oxythiopiprolin, has been registered in North America, and picarbutrazox is an ongoing study in North America and also Asia. And then uh, weed, weed control and leafy vegetables was a priority. For tropical fruit priorities, uh, the higher uh, A priority was for fruit flies on many tropical crops. There are uh, ongoing studies for spinetaram in Latin America, and these are on papaya, pineapple, and banana. And also Asia is starting a study on dragon fruit. Acetamiprid plus pyroproxifen. Uh, there's also projects on persimmons, olives, and rubus species in Australia. And this, these products have also been registered in the US. There's been a number of studies for anthracnose control in tropical fruits. This was our B priority project from our 2015 workshop. Uh, azoxystrobin plus diphenconazole on dragon fruit. There's a codex MRL established. I mentioned that one earlier. Uh, fluopyram was a very active product for um, anthracnose control combinations with tebuconazole trifloxystrobin uh, have all been projects uh, both in North America and in Australia on, on just a large number of different uh, commodities. I should also mention that the papaya project with uh, trifloxystrobin and fluopyram is an active project in Costa, Re Costa Rica and Peru. They've contributed to the U.S. study and then also Asia uh, is doing a study for dragon fruit, and I'll mention that again later as well. And you can see the number of other U.S. and Australia projects. Finally, uh, 2017 fruit priorities were nematodes on bananas. Uh, there was uh, some number of products identified, such as fluopyram and some new active ingredients. There's no uh, foundation projects taking place uh, but uh, we understand that there are some projects on bananas taking place through through the company uh, priorities and projects. Also, uh, Ber Bercoltia was also identified as a biopesticide option. And then anthracnose on uh, mango, we're still looking in to see if there's some new mode of actions that could uh, be possible projects. Just a quick update on some of the ongoing work in Latin America. I've mentioned these spinetaram studies already and also the trifloxy plus fluopyram study on papaya, but I wanted to mention oxythiopiprolin on cocoa bean, uh, cacao bean uh, also taking place. And finally, just a quick update on the first studies that were sponsored by the Minor Use Foundation. And I've discussed most of these earlier, but they were sponsoring uh, Asian Pacific Association of Research Institutions uh, research that, that's just started to take place now. So thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, we've got a, a moment now. If anyone has any questions, and Dan, can you please raise them by entering the letter Q into the Zoom chat box and I'll just give a moment for those to, to come in. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything. So I'd now like to invite Jim Chaput from the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture in Canada to give you an outline of how the prioritisation process has been conducted to date and what will happen in the sessions today. Over to you, Jim. Hello, my name is Jim Chaput. I'm the Minor Use Coordinator 
uh, based in Central Canada in Ontario, Canada, with the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food, and Rural Affairs. Welcome to the third Global Minor Use Priority Setting Exercise. So Michael and I, Michael Braverman from IR4, and I have prepared this um, presentation to quickly give you an update on what's transpired up until now, so that you have a rough idea of what has been uh, done. So the first uh, announcement of the third Global Minor Use Priority Setting Meeting uh, came out in December 2019. In January 2020, as stage one, where we set out the first call for new crop pest priority nominations using the global Excel table. Nobody was required to provide rankings. In stage one, just an, in, an X to indicate uh, the crop pest priority uh, for, 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 all, for your country. The deadline for this was late April 2020. Stage two began in June 1st, 2020. All contributors received the new global spreadsheet with all global crop pest priorities. Priorities were ranked with a one, two, three, or five, with one being high and five being low. Each country ranked crop pests within the temperate, tropical, and protected or greenhouse grown categories. Each country could choose up to 35 crop pest priorities to receive a one, two, three, four, or five. The deadline for this was July 1st. By July 10th, a robust uh, analysis undertaken by our colleague Mario Wick in Germany, who developed the database, was undertaken to analyze all of the information received. And it is quite a complex uh, analysis. If any of you remember from the 2017 meeting when I tried to explain it, um, it was complicated, but complicated also meant robust. Not perfect, but we're getting there. So for example, it looks at how many countries identify a priority, how many countries rank it one or two, and this is a quantitative uh, an analytical step, which left us with 45 top global pest priorities, 15 of temperate, tropical, and 15 in protected crops. So just briefly, I could do 10 slides here explaining how the database was done, but we're doing one to save you the headache. Um, 56 countries participated or populated the database. We added the existing 2017 priorities with new 2020 priorities, and we got a total of 4,139 global priorities. X indicates the minor use priority, and then the additional rankings of one through five were indicated for the top 35. So what you'll be seeing, or what came of this, and most of you received, was the Excel database, which analyzed all of this and ranked them based on the complicated <clears throat> numerical analysis. So the column on the left, the stage two, is the final ranking, and that's what we've been working with since in terms of which uh, crop pests were ranked in the top 15. So if you have any questions about how this was done, uh, I can attempt to explain that. I do have another slide deck that will explain these if you wish to go over that in more detail. I am not, by the way, the expert on this complicated database. In any case, primarily from um, a different, more simplified version. So once that uh, was received, uh, we chose the top 15 in each of the groups and the merit analysis stage three began. A call went out to all the proponents of the top 45 pest priorities to form an interim working group 
from the representative countries that put forward the priority. The task was to run a detailed merit analysis as per the table to follow and assign appropriate delegates to attend the Global Minor Use Priority Setting 3 meeting. And all of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this table. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but it did try to bring attention to and establish merit based upon the crop pest priorities, likelihood of successful registration of uh, useful products uh, in a number of continents around the world. And so it asked you a lot of questions about countries, registrants, efficacy, MRLs, etc., etc. And this gave us our merit analysis scores, which we'll be working from now for the remainder of the workshops uh, today and tomorrow or today and yesterday. So this uh, third stage occurred in September and <clears throat> sorry, was due in September, uh, early, early week of September, and each working group uh, provided a report to the committee vis-a-vis uh, -vis their merit analysis. And now we are at the stage where we are having the Virtual Global Minor Use Foundation, which, by the way, is being facilitated by the Global Minor Use Foundation. So we have had the 4,139 priorities. Those became 45 priorities, three in temperate field, three in tropical, and three in greenhouse protected crops. Each Excel spreadsheet and an Excel spreadsheet will summarize the original score and the merit analysis score uh, on, a, on the screen in front of you. And then we will have a discussion and a consensus building with the uh, options of re-ranking these uh, scores based on a certain set of robust criteria, whatever they may be. And you certainly may have ideas to contribute to these uh, criteria on how do we assess uh, what we've got in front of us. Maybe it's not just uh, the score. So what will be the result of today's meeting? We will have an Excel spreadsheet of priorities that will be ranked. There are two days of, of meetings and each day is a duplicate of each other, but the process starts from the same point, the rank based system. There is only ranking. There's no winners or losers here and no final conclusions uh, will be drawn at this point. In mid-October, the organizing committee is meeting to review the two days of discussions and rankings that we uh, come up with here, the committee will determine the final rankings based on that. Hopefully by October 22nd, a consensus meeting of final conclusions, following by a posting of the final results on the Minor Use Web Foundation's uh, website. Based on the top priorities, protocols will be written and residue and efficacy studies initiated during the 2021 season. Funding will determine how far we go down the list. Results will serve as a guidepost during the next three years of Minor Use Foundation program. So this slide is simply to give you items to consider for the discussion leaders and yourselves uh, to think about and give weight to or not um, in terms of analyzing your merit analyses. Because it may not just be how many points you scored, but it may be other things. You know, is, is the crop pest currently without absolutely any solution? And does that mean it ranks higher automatically? How many existing solutions are available already in the country seeking access to something else? Keep in mind also that the numbers of proposed new solutions, therefore leading to a more merit analysis point, does not necessarily guarantee a higher rank. The quality and global fit of the solutions must be considered. Are any of the existing solutions uh, have a harmonized MRL already? Are currently registered products causing trade issues? 
And then codex MRLs, uh, we should have access to those. I think that's why it's highlighted because we were, wanted to put the link to the codex MRLs. Are there residue data for any solutions available already that simply require JMPR submission and that only require a few additional trials to complete a submission package? Maybe, maybe not. Does the existing MRL reflect the use pattern required to actually control the pest? For solutions not requiring residue data, are there sufficient robust efficacy data available and applicable to all interested countries? Is the solution a new active ingredient or another formulation of one that already exists? And for, for solutions that are only requiring efficacy data, is such data required to actually register uh, the product in the countries with interest? Of course, these are not uh, the end all and be all of potential things that you may wish to discuss with your discussion leader. Um, there may be other criteria. The other question to ask yourself, is any of this or some of this or none of this grounds to justify a change in the rankings, uh, which you have in front of you uh, during this meeting? With that said, I wish you all luck. I'd like to say thank you to the many participants who contributed uh, to this process in as many languages as I can say. Gracias, merci, thank you, abrigado, danke, grazie. And I'll go from there. And thank you again to everybody. Thank you to Michael Braverman, who helped me greatly in putting together this information and has helped greatly uh, throughout the process.